So I was proven right in 2008. But what's going to happen now, what's beginning in, in 2023, is going to be much worse. I mean, this is a much deeper financial crisis. But instead of a financial crisis, the Fed might trade it for a currency crisis and then a sovereign debt crisis because they are going to just blow up uh, you know, the, the money printing uh, during this downturn. They've already started it. I mean, they basically returned the QE without admitting it. Yeah, nothing is fine. And, and Janet Yellen should know because she's partially responsible for this mess. I mean, she's not totally responsible, but she's certainly uh, one of the, the people who is, uh, you know, who bears responsibility here. She was the chairman of the Fed. And she was uh, active at the Fed. She was at the San Francisco Fed while the housing bubble was inflating. You know, that California was, you know, one of the, you know, the biggest parts of the bubble. And she was there at the San Francisco Fed, I mean, telling people not to worry about the housing market, that the people who thought it was a bubble were wrong. And right. she even said that if the, if the housing prices went down, it wouldn't even hurt the economy because it was just so strong. It didn't matter if housing prices went down. At one point, I forget what year it was, maybe the 1970s or so, one Zimbabwe dollar and one U.S. dollar were, were on, at parity. So that just shows you uh, what could happen. You know, you have a whole graveyard of uh, dead fiat currencies. They've all died. I mean, none of them survive. Uh, and I, I don't think the current crop will be any exception. The only question is, you know, how much longer do they have? You know, what's their lifespan? I, I think, I mean, we're already paying double for a lot of the things at the grocery store. You know, I don't need, you look at certain prices and they, they, they've gone way up. But this latest round of bank bailouts is going to cause tremendous inflation because where is the Federal Reserve getting the money to bail out all these banks? You know, uh, President Biden made it a, a uh, made a big deal about reassuring the public that, you know, the taxpayers aren't going to have to pay for this. Well, technically, I guess it's not taxes that are going up the, in the traditional sense. It's inflation that's going to go up. These bank bailouts aren't free right? Right. and they're not going to be paid for by the banks themselves. <laughs> they're getting the bailouts. They're not going to pay for it. You know, it's the American public that's going to pay for it. But the way they're going to pay for it is through inflation because the Federal Reserve is going to have to create out of thin air trillions of new dollars and add it to the money supply. It's going to give the dollars to the banks and the banks are going to give the Fed their treasuries and their mortgage backed securities, except they're going to give the Fed maybe 60 or 70 cents worth of treasuries and mortgage backed securities, and they're going to get a, a dollar, right? They're not going to get the market value for those securities, uh, which is what we would get if, if any, if you or I were dumb enough to buy U.S. treasuries, you know, 20, 30 year treasuries a year or two ago when they were yielding 1%. And, and then we wanted to sell them, you know, we could only get maybe 70 cents on the dollar or 60 cents on the dollar. But the banks that were dumb enough to buy them, they could get 100 cents on the dollar from uh, from the Fed, but the any money. Yeah, and the Fed doesn't have any money. It's it's losing money itself. The Fed is getting bailed out by the Treasury because the Fed doesn't have any money. But then again, neither does the Treasury. So the Federal Reserve has to print money to give it to the Treasury to bail itself out. But all of this means that the dollars that we all hold, I mean, I don't hold them because I get rid of them as fast as I get them. But the average American has got dollars and those dollars are going to buy a lot less as a result of these bank bailouts. So yeah. you know, when Biden or anybody in the government or in the media says, oh, the government acted prudently, we've saved the day. We've, we've reassured that your bank account is safe. Nobody's bank account is safe. You know, when the government tells you that your bank account is safe, it's because it's not. And the reason it's not safe, it's not because the banks are gonna fail. The government has already said, we're not gonna let them fail. Now that's a mistake. They should let insolvent banks fail. That's how capitalism works. But, you know, we don't have that anymore. We have socialism. And so the insolvent banks won't fail. They're going to be propped up with inflation. What that means is every single bank account in the country, even the people who are banking with solvent banks, their accounts are going to lose tremendous value because the money in their accounts is going to lose its purchasing power through inflation. So no bank account is safe. 
everybody with a bank account is going to experience substantial loss of purchasing power. And so the smart thing to do is to withdraw your money from the bank. I mean, your savings, I mean, you've, you know, you got to keep short term there to, to pay your bills. But money that you don't need for a year or two or five years, whatever, don't leave it at a bank because you're guaranteed to lose because prices are going to go way up. So you should pull your money out of the bank and do something else. Buy gold, buy silver. That's a better uh, savings vehicle than well, fiat currencies. Or invest, you know, get into stocks. I buy foreign dividend paying stocks for my clients, value stocks. You know, people, some people buy real estate, but what you can't own is dollars or, you know, a bank account because you're going to lose. Well, you know, my company, the one you're, you know, we're talking about your specific asset management, that we're not here to help you manage your cash flow or pay your bills. So to the extent that you have money that needs to be liquid to buy or pay for you know goods and services you, you know there you need to leave it in a bank or some type of institution but well the <laughs> banks are all going to be bailed out so you, what you can't trust is the money in the bank the problem so the money that you're going to use for short-term purposes i mean even if it loses value it's not going to lose that much because it's not there that long you're, you're spending it what i'm talking about is the money you don't need day to day if you have money in your business that you don't need, that you just want to keep it for a rainy day, but you're probably not going to have to tap into it, that's the kind of money that you want to send to me to manage. Because there I can put it in assets that will beat inflation. As the dollar is losing value, your account with me is gaining value. So now you'll have more dollars in the future. Uh, but you don't want to send me the money that you need you know, for next month's rent. I think the world will move away from fiat currencies. And I think a lot of people will start transacting in gold again through the internet, through the blockchain, or our private companies will tokenize gold. And then you'll be able to transact in gold. You'll be able to use gold to pay your bills because the person you're paying is gonna wanna get paid in gold. He's not gonna, he's not. But that's when the dollar really starts to lose money rapidly. You know, when we're like Argentina or something like that. And then you can't even risk keeping your short term money in dollars. It's not that right. bad yet. Okay. But even if inflation is 10 percent or let's say 12 percent a year, you're only losing one percent a month. So if you're if you're turning your account over every month, all right, it's one percent. It's not the end of the world. But when you start losing 10 percent a month, right, when you have 120 percent inflation now, you know, you got to worry about, you know, the, the money you leave in the bank overnight. So that's when I think people will start turning to alternatives like 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 tokenized gold so that they can transact in that now i know there's some people out there that think no they're going to use bitcoin that ain't going to happen you know they're not going to use bitcoin uh but they could easily use uh, uh digital gold or digital tokens that are backed by real gold look at gold as a store of value as a safe haven as just an alternative to cash right that's what it is it's money it's not an investment but gold mining stocks are an investment in businesses that mine gold and and so you know whenever you make an investment and you're a stockholder in a company you subject yourself to all sorts of risks market related risks company specific risks or political risks but if the price of gold does what i think it's going to do uh you know the, the these gold stocks are gold mines i mean they're 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 going to go way up i mean i have you know a lot of my own portfolio my personal portfolio is invested in gold stocks, a very yes. high allocation, maybe about 50% of my investment portfolio, not my net worth, but what I have in my brokerage account, right? About half of that is in gold mining stocks. The rest is in dividend paying foreign stocks. Some of them are in the commodity space. My, my second largest allocation is oil and gas and alternative energy. So I have a lot of energy related investments, but they all pay good dividends, most of them. I mean, pretty high. Um, and, and so I'm getting income off these investments and I don't need the income because I, I, I have income working so I, I can reinvest the dividends in, in um, you know, in more more stocks. I mean, that's what people need to be doing when they're building for retirement. You have you, it, what Wall Street tells you to do is buy these stocks that don't pay any dividends while you're working. And then when you retire, you can sell those stocks and buy bonds and get some income. Well, what if by the time you retire, 
the stocks that you bought have crashed and they're not worth very much. Right. And if you sell them, you can't get much income. You see, I build portfolios for people and we have separately managed accounts too, that you can have an account that's individual stocks too, not funds. And you could talk to my brokers, but I build portfolios that you don't have to sell when you retire. So you have a portfolio that's paying five, 6% dividend right now, right? But it's also stocks that are growing their earnings and, the, and should appreciate and, and grow their dividends. So as you're working, when you don't need the income, you take the dividends and you reinvest them I and mean, you buy more stock. Then when you retire, you've got this big portfolio of income producing stocks that's even larger because you've compounded your returns by reinvesting those dividends. Now, when you go to retire, it doesn't matter what the price of those stocks are because you don't have to sell them to retire. You just stop reinvesting the dividends and you live off the dividend income.